Welcome. These video notes cover the mechanics of writing methods. The prerequisites for these topics include that you have reviewed the Intro to Procedural Abstraction video notes and you have read the textbook chapter sections on methods. Recall the ingredients of Java classes consists of variables and methods. The topics here include talking about methods from a perspective of organized units of program code, their purpose being to perform some action, and the fact that they are designed for reuse. Although it is hard to envision at this point, real-world software is huge in scale. It is not unusual for a program to exceed a million lines of code. Once we wrap our heads around that thought, it is easier to understand the importance of adopting best standard practices when designing and writing coding solutions. So, even though our programming projects are very small in scale, we are adopting these best practices so that we can tackle larger, more complex programming problems in the future. One best practice ideal is reuse. We should always strive to create reusable software components that can be used over and over again in different programs. We have already begun to do this. We have been reusing the scanner class to get input from the keyboard. We have been reusing system.out.print and print line methods to write output to the screen. And we have used the decimal format class to neatly output currency amounts. How do we design for reuse? As someone learning to program, it is good to get in the habit of writing small, single-purposed, reusable components. This allows us to use common sets of code with different sets of data. We'll see an example of that in this video. Another set of reusable methods fall under the utility methods category. There is already a lot of these kinds of methods available in the importable Java class libraries. It is chock full of reusable classes and methods. For example, Scanner and the Math Library. The Math class has methods for easily calculating square roots, sines, cosines, and the like. We will explore more of these class libraries in the next few weeks. And coming soon, we will look at writing our own classes that can be reused, like Scanner class. These will include methods that act on the variable members of the class. It is standard practice to write set and get methods for the class variables, which we will learn to do. Let's take a look at a fun example problem that begs for reuse instead of repeating lines of code, the 99 bottles of beer song. We'll consider the writing of a program to display the verses of the ever popular road trip song, 99 bottles of beer. I promise I won't sing it. There is a lot of repetition in the song, as it is essentially one verse that is repeated 99 times. We will create a verse method that uses an input parameter for the number of bottles. We will use a for counting loop to call it 98 times. Here is a sample program that uses two methods, main and sing bottles verse. Note that this really needs a sing last verse method. Since we run out of bottles, it is a little bit different in that last verse from the other 98. Because of that, it is left as an exercise for you to complete. Let's examine the code. We see public class Oktoberfest has our main method and the method we added, sing bottles verse. In class Oktoberfest, we print out a message saying sing to the tune of 99 bottles of beer on the wall, then a for loop that starts at 99 and decrements down to 1. So this for loop starts with bottle set at 99. We do the method sing bottles verse for 99 bottles. Then we come back and decrement the number of bottles at the top of the for. Check to be sure that we are still greater than 1, and sing the bottles verse again with 98 bottles. We come back, subtract 1 from the bottles, check to be sure it's still greater than 1, and repeat sing bottles verse with 97 bottles. 
and we do this until bottles becomes one at which point we don't repeat the for loop and when and if you add the sing last verse it will call that method let's look at the sing bottles verse method it has one input named bottles left inside the method we print out the words to the verse bottles left of beer on the wall bottles left bottles of beer you take one down you pass it around bottles left minus one bottles of beer on the wall so depending on which number is passed into the verse will dictate how many bottles of beer are still on the wall and after we take one down what that number minus one would be programming practice implementation of code standard best practice of designing and implementing code includes the declare define and use approach the ingredients of classes are set up to be used in this manner consider variables we declare their type and name them we define them by assigning the variable a value after they were declared and defined we use them let's consider this approach for methods the other ingredient of classes the declaration of the method is accomplished by the header of the method the methods header gives us all the information we need to know in order to use or call the method let's look closely at the 99 bottles of beer sing bottles verse method we named it sing bottles verse it's good programming practice to use meaningful names for variables and methods this name clearly states the purpose of the method to produce the verse of the song the method output description precedes the name of the method this is the return type and it always comes in front of the name of the method since there will not be any output produced by sing bottles verse method this has a void return type it's a procedural standalone method a method always has a set of parentheses after its name which is a visual cue that it is not a variable inside the parentheses will be the inputs to the method these are called parameters if there are no inputs hence no parameters the parens will be left empty the parameter list specifies the order type and name of each input parameter required by the method the name of a parameter in the method declaration is called a formal parameter after writing the method header declaration we write the definition this is called the method body in Java the method header is followed by the method body for methods this is the list of statements inside the curly braces that will be executed when the method is called here is the body for sing bottles verse note the set of braces are required by Java they delineate the beginning and end of the methods code this methods code is one long print line the input parameter bottles left can be used like a local variable inside the method once the method has been properly defined it is available for use in our program it is actually used 98 times a good example of reusing instead of retyping code since this is a void method it stands alone as a program statement we call it by name pass in the input argument bottles and it will execute its statements after finishing Java comes back to the main method we have reached the end of the for loops code so bottles is decremented by one next Java checks is the bottles value still greater than one yes so we repeat the call to the sing bottles verse and we will repeat this over and over again until bottles has a value of one parameters these are inputs to the method when a method is called the arguments are copied into the formal parameters in the method header bottles is the argument bottles left is the formal parameter for method sing bottles verse the name we are using inside the method is different from the named variable in main 
It is an independent copy of the original Bottles from Maine. It can only be used inside Sing Bottles Verse. Like variables, the area of code that parameters can be used in is called its scope, and its boundaries are defined by the braces. Let's look at the flow of control for 99 bottles of beer program execution. We start at main, just like Java always does. The first call to sing bottles verse passed the integer 99 to the method. The method executes and produces output to the screen. When it is finished, we return back to the main method. Since calling the method is the only line of code in the for loop, the decrement for bottles is done making it 98. It compared to the conditional check, is it greater than 1? Since it is, sing bottles verse is again called, but this time with a value of 98. It executes and produces the following on the screen. We return to main, back in the for loop again, and it subtracts 1 from bottles, checks the condition, and calls sing bottles verse with input 97. It executes. And we repeat this cycle going from main to sing bottles verse and back again over and over until the last time we call sing bottles verse with a value of 2. It produces its output and returns to the for loop. This time the for loop decrements bottles to 1 and when we check the condition 1 is not greater than 1 so we're finished executing the for loop. A methods return statement is how we send output back to the program. Sing bottles verse did not have output so there was no need to add a return statement to the method when it was finished executing its body of code it automatically closes and the flow of control returned to main. Let's clarify the use of the return statement in Java. The return statement has two purposes in a method. Number one is to exit the method. It will force an immediate return to the caller. So we should always be putting the return statement last in the method's body, right before the closing curly brace. Also note, good standard practice is to only have one return statement per method. If you write a return statement and have a line or two of code after it, you will never execute those lines of code. The other purpose of the return statement is to send output to the calling method. This is also known as returning a value. Note that void methods do not need a return since there are no outputs from the void method. Function methods, though, need to have a return expression statement. The expression must match the method type. Java code will not compile cleanly if you forget to return a matching expression to the type listed in the header of the method. These are strict rules of the language. So when you get a red squiggly on the closing brace of a method, check to be sure that you have a correct return statement. If you are still getting a red squiggly, be sure that your method is defined inside the class. There should always be a closing class brace as the last line of code in the file. Let's recap a summary of the method mechanics. When writing code, we use a three steps declare, define, use strategy. Step one, the declaration describes what? The properties of our program component. For variables, this describes its type and name. For methods, we describe the return type, the name, and the input parameter list. Number two, the definition describes the how. These are the actions or the value changes to a component. For variables, assignment does the definition. For methods, the list of statements to be executed is its definition. Once we have declared and defined our variables and methods, we're ready to use them. For variables, we use their stored values. For methods, we run them by calling them. Parameters are our way of inputting information to a method, and the return statement is used to get output from our methods. Happy Java coding!